Good morning, and welcome today to this third Sunday of Advent. And this third Sunday of Advent is, as we talked about, in honor of love. And we look on this journey expectantly on the coming of the Messiah, the newborn King. This Advent season, we have been looking at the redemption that we each receive through the birth and the life of Jesus. Additionally, we've also looked at Ebenezer Scrooge from Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol, looking specifically at how he transformed and is redeemed throughout the course of this story and his encounters with the ghosts of Christmas past, Christmas present, and Christmas future. Through these encounters, Scrooge reluctantly, very reluctantly, looks at his life and begins to reevaluate what is important and what is valuable. As I previously mentioned, this week our Advent focus is on love. As followers of Jesus, we are called to love. It is at the heart of our faith and a tenet of which we are called to live our lives. Wondrously, the more that we give our love, the more love we receive. This, however, is a lesson that Ebenezer Scrooge has ignored and shied away from for most of his life. However, through his visits with the ghost of Christmas present, he begins to see the value of showing love to himself and even more importantly, showing love to other people. This morning, we'll explore love and the gift of presence. Please pray with me. Good and gracious God, whose love came down on Christmas and put flesh to walk among us, help us to accept and share your presence so that the world might know your love like we do. This morning, we ask for your guidance and your love as we seek to understand. And now, Lord, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O God, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. The third week of Advent, we light the candle of love. Advent is a time of preparation, but it's also a time, as the kids said, for kindness, for thinking of others, for sharing what we have with others, and for expressing love towards other people. Yes, it is a time to love others as God first loved us, by giving of God's most precious gift, Jesus. As God is love, let us also be love to others. As I think of the countless ways we express love in our lives, I'm reminded of the honor and privilege I have as a pastor to share in the joining of two people in the covenant of marriage. Yesterday, as I said, I had the privilege of officiating the marriage of two pretty amazing people. It also happened to be the first one I got to do, which made it even more special. <laughs> The bride I have known since she was probably about five years old. They've had their ups and downs throughout their six plus years of, of relationship, including some real heartbreak and real disappointment. However, what remained steadfast throughout all of that was their bond of a genuine friendship with each other and their unending devotion and love for each other. It's apparent that they understand what it meant to be present with each other. Their love story has been rooted in their faith in God and in their faith in each other. They prepared themselves and their families for this day, and it truly was a day centered around God's greatest gift of all, which is love. Our Old Testament reading from Deuteronomy is one that challenges us to be for God, the voice and action of love for all people. In ancient Israel, the relationship with God was lived out through the close and connected relationships with each other. They, like people of God have been throughout time, were called to take care of each other, and likewise were expected to do so without trepidation, without resentment. As the words of scripture say, open your hand wide to them, you must generously lend them whatever they need. Make sure no wicked thought crosses your mind. These instructions, therefore, do not only offer an expectation to be a giver, but to be a cheerful giver. Generosity and compassion are the essence of this covenant. It says to give liberally 
and ungrudgingly, our life and our gifts become fully blessed when they also bless others. The Apostle Paul, in his letter to the Romans, reminds us that love is the fulfilling of the law. Love truly is central, a central theme throughout the Bible and throughout the Christian faith. When we follow the law and give generously, we are in turn showing that unconditional love to all who receive it. It's interesting to note the importance of the mentioning of the seventh year in that reading, the sabbatical year for debt release. This is in reference to the law of Moses that states that every seventh year, the fields must not be cultivated. They must be allowed to rest. It was a Sabbath for the ground, meant to remind the Israelites that the land was not theirs, but rather the land was the Lord's and it was given to them in trust. But while this command had a religious basis, it also brought with it some social consequences. The seventh year was also the year for canceling debts. So as it approached, many lenders would be hesitant to lend too much in order to avoid the risk of them not getting it all back during that Sabbath year. This hesitancy could be defined, as we stated in our reading, a wicked thought, which could then lead to a true sin. But giving generously, on the other hand, always leads to God's blessings. Generous giving and debt forgiveness are two things that Scrooge knows nothing about, or at least has little to do or desire to do in his life. Can you just hear him, upon hearing these words from Scripture, saying resoundingly, Bah humbug. Scrooge indeed lived his life in such a way that could be calculated and equated and had measured rewards and consequences. There was little wiggle room for Scrooge when it came to business, and finances. There was little to no regard for humanity and unforeseen circumstances. However, through his visit with the ghost of Christmas present, Scrooge begins to see things a little bit differently. He begins to see the world a little bit differently, and he begins to feel just a little bit more compassion for other people. Last week, we spoke of the message from the angels to the shepherds to find this newborn king. Today, we read of the magi who were led by a star to pay honor to a newborn king. While both of these groups of people may have appeared to be unlikely folks to be called to such an important task, they are exactly the types of people that God calls to do great and important things. The Magi, who were believed to be wise men who studied the stars, were compelled to follow this one star. These wise ones from the East were scientists, likely practiced other religions, yet God still used them. God used their faith and their knowledge to bring them to the Christ. No, the Magi did not come looking for the Christ through a vision or through an angel chorus but rather they just came seeking the Christ after studying the night skies and the stars. God was doing a new thing back then, just as God continues to do a new thing with each of us today. The birth of Jesus brings with it a transformation of our world from looking at the world in terms of those old days and instead looking at the world in terms of this day. I'd like to share an excerpt from the book The Redemption of Scrooge by Matt Rawl, where he talks about those days versus this day. In those days, the palace ruled the world, but on this day, the world is being turned upside down. In those days, the shepherds were less than unimportant, but on this day, the shepherds were the ones who got to share the magic. In those days, we tried to make our traditions and our material gifts perfect. On this day, We let go of anxiety in making things perfect so that we can make room for a perfect God. In those days, our Christmas list was full of material things for friends and families and coworkers. On our list this day contains what Jesus wants. It is his birthday after all. Jesus wants the proclamation of good news, release, recovery, freedom, and favor. In those days, we worried about what's under the tree instead of the tree itself. On this day, we see clearly the giver of all life. 
So as we continue to move through the Advent season, let us take a look at things of our past that have held us back from living into our present. What are the things of those days that are keeping you from living into this day? I pray that God would move our hearts forward from those days when we forgot what the season was all about and into this day when we proclaim Jesus' wish list of good news, release, recovery, freedom, and favor. Let us always remember that this is the day that the Lord has made. So let us rejoice and be glad in it. I hope that each of you are continuing to offer up both your prayers of joy and your prayers of sorrow through your pieces of ribbon and collecting them in your brown bags. And if you did not get one, we still have more. And remember that each of those prayers will then come back to be a part of our Christmas story on Christmas Eve, to fill our empty manger with the straw of our prayers, both the good ones and the ones that we struggle with, that we gave all to God. Today, we spoke of love and the importance of paying attention to what is happening in our lives and in our world. As we continue on our expectant journey to Christmas, I pray that you will find ways to celebrate today, to live in the moment, to be present with others, and to offer love to all whom you meet. I look forward to continuing in this journey through the Advent season. May we continue to learn through the transformation of Ebenezer Scrooge and seek out ways to transform the parts of our lives that need to be changed. Let us pray. Gracious God, you are ever present and ever loving. We ask that you help us let go of our worries and our self-loathing so that we might see today as the gift that it is. Help us to see all that is good and all that is holy in this world and remember to celebrate. By your spirit, help us to share peace and hope and love as a sign of our faith and trust in you. Indeed, the miracle has begun in us for the sake of the world. God bless us, everyone.